Hey everybody, today Rado runs through La Isla where we are going to explore the island of mystery. And that's because we have discovered an island full of animals that have long been thought to be extinct, including the dodo. The dodo is still out there. And a whole bunch of creatures I've never heard of besides the dodo. There's a, uh, what is it? Let's see, I think it actually says what they all are. It's the, uh, the elusive golden toad, the dexterous, oh, what are they? The dexterous San, um, Sandinian pika, the vigilant giant fossa, and the graceful owlet moth. Suddenly, there's a place in the world where all these animals have been discovered to still be thriving. And so, we are a group of explorers and uh, scientists who have come to this island to study these creatures in their natural habitat. As you can see on the picture, there's one of us with a camera wanting to take a picture. And that's what we are trying to do as players. Each of us has a group of five explorers, although we can ultimately get a couple more, depending on what cards we play, and we want to deploy them all over the island so that we can you know, observe the creatures in their natural habitat, so we can take pictures, so we can tag them, so we can do all kinds of neat scientific stuff. And I, I say that because a lot of people have the wrong impression of this game that we're here to actually hunt these poor creatures because there's a terrible, terrible um, mistranslation in the English rules that basically say we are here to hunt them. But rest assured, we're not here to hunt them. We are here to protect them and study them and learn from them. That's what this game is all about and it's very, very cool. I just wanted to say that up front because a lot of people have the wrong impression of what the theme of this game is. We are not hunters. We are explorers. We are scientists. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's actually start playing. Now, the game is set up, there's this neat radial board, and every time you put a whole bunch of random creatures all over the place in all these different tiles, and what we need to do, we need to deploy our workers such that they will completely surround a certain creature. Like if I get the, my three guys into these three spaces, then this particular tile that has a dodo on it has been surrounded, and that means we get to study this clutch of dodos and I end up claiming this tile. Now again, it doesn't mean we've hunted the tile, it doesn't mean we're taking these dodos back to sell, it just means that we, I, the white player, am the one who has studied that and scored points for it. Again, don't know why I'm harping on that so much, just want to make sure we are not hunters, we are not poachers, we are scientists. This is all good. Alrighty, okay, so anyway, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get our guys deployed into all these different areas so that we can study these magnificent creatures. And we do that by, at the beginning of every round, taking three cards and assigning them to slot A, B, or D. And then after everybody's done that, we're all going to do it in secret at the same time and reveal at the same time. Then we will actually go through simultaneously for the most part and do phases A, B, C, and D. And so, let's go on ahead and start doing that. Now, each card we get, and you can see there's a big stack. This is 180 cards. Let me tell you, it is not easy shuffling 180 cards. That is actually quite the challenge. But we've each gotten our starting hand of three cards, and each card has three core elements. A special bonus you can get up here at the top. I've got three... Well, actually, I've got two special bonuses that are kind of the same. This is, if I, both of these are, if I put an explorer on a tent space, then I will either get three victory points or I will get a uh, cube, a resource cube of my choice. And this other one is, if I put an explorer on a rope space, I can increase the value of one of the creature types or you know, one of the five species. And so, there's these three powers. Now, what I'm going to do is, of these three cards, one of them will go into A, B, and D. Whichever one I put into the um, A spot means I will take that special power, and I'll have that special power in place for a while. Now, on the bottom left, whichever one of the cards I put into the B spot means from the bottom left, I will get that resource. I will either get a, I will get equipment that lets me explore a desert, equipment that lets me explore a swamp, or equipment that lets me explore the mountains. That's what the different colors mean. And then, whichever of these cards I put into the D slot, that will increase um, demand for knowledge of that particular type of creature. Interestingly, all three of my cards have a moth. So no matter what, one of, whichever of these cards I play, I'm going to increase the scientific demand for information about moths. The, you know, the, whatever it is, the, the, um, the outlet moth. 
So, I, I know that, so I don't have to worry about what I'm going to place in D, because they're all the same. But I should ask myself, what am I going to place in A and B? And let's see. Now, hmm. So this one gives me extra cubes, which is equipment that I need to place my guys on the board because it's expensive to deploy them out to the field. This is getting points, and points are a big deal. Of course, that's how you win the game. And this is increasing the value of creatures. Oh, by the way, I should have said at the beginning of the game, I am the world expert on golden toads. So I know more about it than anybody else, and Jen is the world expert on dodos. And um, you know, we each get one of these randomly. I could have been the world expert on moths and whatnot, but as it is, I'm the world expert on toads. I forgot to mention that as randomly randomly part of the beginning of the game. You know what? I think I want to play this card into my A slot because I'm going to want to be able to collect more cubes. Cubes, without getting the right color cubes, you can't really get very far in this game at all, which you'll see when I start demonstrating. So I think that's what I'm going to play into my A slot. And now into my B slot. Do I want to collect swamp equipment or mountain equipment. Well, now the interesting thing is since I know I'm going to want to deploy a guy out to a tent somewhere because that will activate this special power, then I need to look at, well, do I want to deploy to the mountains or the swamps? Because let's see, if you know, here's a tent in the mountains. So if I were to deploy a guy over here, because I'm going to want to deploy a guy in a tent space. So that means I'm deploying him around a couple of dodos and a what do you call it? The the little marmot, the uh, the chipmunk, the I can never remember the the pika, the little pika. So yeah, that's okay. But since I'm about to increase the value of moth knowledge, I'd rather get myself deployed close to a moth because then I could potentially, you know, discover, you know, learn about that moth and then get points for having done it. So, are there any moths next? Let's see. Where's the swamp that has a tent on it? Over here. Ah, yes. So, nope, no, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this swamp, that's the place I want to end up placing a guy. So, I'm going to place this one, which means I'm going to get the equipment I need to explore a swamp. So, I place this in secret. And then that means this last one is going to be placed over. But again, it didn't matter which one I put in the D slot because they were all moths. All right, so I have chosen mine. And now, at the, while I'm thinking about that, Jen is doing the same thinking about the card she's got in her hand. So let's see what she ended up getting. Ah, very nice. Right off the bat, she got um, a dodo. Remember, she is the world expert on dodos. So I think she is going to want to place this card into her D slot so dodo knowledge becomes more valuable and worth more points. OK, so let's look at her other cards. What else does she have? Right. Okay. So now this is this special power. And by the way, everybody gets these nice uh, summaries that you know are, are, are at a glance. Although the summaries are a little bit hard to read because the text is really small. But basically, you can see from this one, whenever we uh, whenever we get a corresponding animal tile of the chipmunk, we get well no, the chipmunk. It's three points. And this one is whenever we place a guy in the inner ring in one of these spaces, we get two points. Okay, so now I got to give myself one of these two special powers, right? Let's see here. And you know what? I think I'll, I'll take this one because I don't know if I want to. Well, you know what? Actually, it would be nice. Right now, I have a, a vested interest because I know that dodos are about to become more valuable. I have a vested interest in, in collecting more dodos, right? I, I, I want to. Let's see. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead. Actually, I'll do this. I'll make the getting victory points for deploying my guys in the inner ring. I'll make that my special power, which means process elimination. This is going to be my B. Okay, so we're done. Now everybody reveals at the same time, and everybody goes ahead and does A and B simultaneously. C has to be done in turn order, so we'll get to that in a second. So everybody does A. A means go on ahead and take the card you put in A and make it one of your special powers. Now you'll notice this little player thing, this player board, has space for three. So ultimately, I can have three special powers or abilities active at any given time. And so if you can, you really, you know, what would be ideal is later on, if I could get this special power, then I get two things for occupying a tent space. But unfortunately, that didn't work out that way. So anyway, so I've activated my special power. And now from now on, whenever I deploy a guy into a tent space, I get another cube of my choice for free. Now, B is give me one swamp equipment cube. Okay. And so that's done. 
And now, well, we have to do C in order, so let's come back to that. Meanwhile, Jen, she gives herself the special power of wanting to deploy, deploy, uh, deploy explorers in the central area of the island. She gets herself a green. Hmm, that didn't work out that well. But that's okay, that's okay, it's okay. All right, she gets herself a green cube. And now we are to C. And we'll have to do this in turn order. I happen to be the first player. I've got the first player marker. So I will be the first. And what this says here is we are now in turn order going to deploy one of our explorers into one of these spots. And to do it, we have to discard two cubes of the same color. So you'll notice the only two cubes I have of the same color, I started with one of each. And I just got another brown. So the only place I could deploy one of my guys is into a swamp. So, I'll go on ahead and, t and discard these two to use my swamp equipment. And now, I will deploy myself over here in this swamp space. I gave up two brown cubes to go to this place. And, since this was a tent location, I now get a cube of any color I want. That was my special power. So, obviously I want to take a cube that's going to match one of my remaining colors, so I'll be able to go someplace else on the next turn. Now, what I want to do on the next turn, ideally, say, is go to another place with a, with a tent. So, maybe I want to come over here. Maybe I want to get a green cube so I can occupy this space. But here's the thing. Now that I've occupied this, I want to occupy this space and this space and this space. Because if I have like guys in all of these, I'd be able, I will have surrounded, and I'll be able to grab these animal tokens. But unfortunately, that's at, that's at odds with my desire to occupy more tents. Let's see. So there's a tent here, which doesn't really overlap my current guy. And by the way, you know, the board is completely set up randomly. It could have been, as part of random setup, that this tent could have been over here, and then they would have actually worked well together. Let's see, and there's a tent way over here, very far away from my dude. A tent way over here. Now this one isn't so bad. I, I put, if I set up shop in this desert, in a future turn, I could set up shop here, and then I'd have two guys, which would let me get this little uh, the lemur, the cat, whatever it is. And then, but so having set up this guy, and then this guy would ultimately let me get the toad, and I'm an expert in toads. So this one isn't so bad. You know what? I think that's the case. Remember, I, I'm thinking about this because I have to decide what color cube I'm going to take, because I'm going to take a yellow one. All right. So that means on the next turn, I'm going to want to go to a desert because that's the only place I can go. So I've got two deserts. And as well, I'm going to want to go to... So chances are I'm going to go over there. But we'll see what happens. All right. So that was me. Now, Jen, she has two green cubes, which means she can go out to a plane somewhere. And remember, she wants to go to the inner circle. So she's going to come over here into this green space, which is on the inner circle. And that means it's the inner circle. She just scored herself two points. Jen is on the board. And um, and that was that. Now, the interesting thing is Jen uh, wants to capture more dodos. And how nice is this? There happens to be a dodo. So Jen, by taking this space, has started working on capturing this dodo. Or again, not capturing, but studying this dodo. She needs to go here and here in a following turn. All right, so each of us has done the C step. And now we can go back to D, which is everybody doing it at the same time. I increase the value of moths. So, it moves up one. Now, moths, moth information, all the information of all the creatures is worth zero at the moment. But if I could move up moth two more times, one, two, I'm sorry, three, then moth information will be worth one point. And by that time, I definitely want to have some moth information, some moth tiles. Although, what I really want to do is I want to push up the golden toad because I already have, this counts as basically having two small tiles. And whenever you push one of these information demand tokens up, after you do that, if you have creatures of that type, you will get points for it. So anyway, I didn't have any moss, so I pushed that up. Now, Jen, she pushed the dodo up. Where is it? And she has effectively two dodos. And because that's what the big tile represents. But unfortunately, dodo information isn't worth anything yet, so she doesn't score anything. But she's closer to scoring stuff on dodos. And now that was it. That was one full round. We take these cards, we discard them. We hand the first player marker over to the next player clockwise. And then everybody draws three new cards. One, two, three. 
and we start the second round. And I know in this round, I'm going to try and go to a, a desert. Jen, I don't know where she's going to go yet because she hasn't collected any additional cube colors for herself. But remember, she is going to play a card into the B section and that, well, as it turns out, uh, she has a chance to get desert or swamp tiles. But I don't know that yet because I haven't seen what she's played. And me, I've got a chance to get nothing but desert cubes. Ah, now I'm... Well, who knew? Uh, I chose to take a desert cube. Now I'm just going to be drowning in desert cubes. But we'll worry about that later because there's also, obviously, three new special powers, one of which I can give to myself. And I now have the opportunity to increase the value of dodos, which I don't want to do because that only helps Jen because she's the dodo queen. So I'll probably try to increase the value of these... Oh, what are they called again? The cats. The, the Mika... The Pikas. Because I'm planning on um, getting this Pika tile over here anyway. So that actually works out pretty well. But I still have to choose what power I'm going to want to give myself. But you know what? That was the first of several full rounds. This game goes until the, the demand for information meters total in a two-player game seven. So for instance, if say the demand for Pika information has gotten up here to four and the demand for the oh the hamster is is at one we're at five if and then say if this thing gets up to here to two that's four five six seven that would trigger the end of the game so it'll be a while before and we'll have many many opportunities to score points because whenever we completely surround one of these tiles not only do we get the animal tile but we also score those points but a lot of special powers give us points like for instance Jen gets two powers two points every time she takes one of these inner spaces and by the way if she wants she could move an explorer in here to where I am we don't keep each other out that way but if you want to see some more stuff if you have a few more rounds so where we can actually you know surround uh, creatures, start scoring some points, and seeing what other types of special powers we can get, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.